Hi there, everyone. After years of trying, I have finally got a special guest here at the Royal Society. It is John Green. You come to London a bit, John, but I finally got you here to the Royal Society. I'm so excited to be here. This is, this is dream come true stuff right now. Look at that. That's, the bar has been raised high. Now, for those of you who don't know who John is, and you're on YouTube, first, I'm impressed that you don't know who he is. John is an author, YouTuber, podcaster, but today we're really going to lean into his books and his writing. We've got Rupert Baker from the Royal Society, who is a book expert, and we have got out a treasure trove of some of the finest and most interesting books at the Royal Society to see if we can wow John. I, I think you're going to accomplish it. All right. We're going to start with what I think is the most important book at the Royal Society, although it's, yeah. it's not really a book, but you tell us what this is. Well, it's a handwritten book. It's the book that all our fellows have signed in since the mid 1660s and wow. continue to sign in every year at our admission day ceremonies. This is the charter book. So the first page, oh, wow. unsurprisingly, is the royal crest of King Charles II. And that's from a, the 17th century, right? Yeah, mid 1660s. He was our founder patron. Oh, this is the Royal Society. The Royal Society's okay. crest. Oh. Nullius in verba. Nothing in words. Probably shouldn't be telling that to a writer. <laughs> <laughs> take, take nobody's word for it as a Don't more informal translation. For it. I'll show you page one. Unsurprisingly, the king gave us the book, so he gets to sign it first. Page five is where all the original fellows of the society popped back in to sign the book. So, for example, you've got Christopher Wren. Wow. Founder fellow of the society in wow. 1660. And just squeezed on our experimental curator and fellow, Robert Hooke. <gasps> wow. We've done lots of Hooke videos, haven't we? We would live in a vastly different world without Robert Hooke's contributions. I think about him a lot as somebody who's obsessed with microbes. Because how could I? I, I couldn't have been obsessed with microbes um, before. So I would have had a different, um, I, I assume I still would have had OCD, but I would have had a different focus for it. Yeah. Uh, so thanks, Robert. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Most famously on page nine, there's a tiny little signature about halfway down the second column. Sir Newton. Isaac Newton. Wow. I guess he wasn't Sir Isaac Newton then. Just plain Isaac. Yeah. And Edmund Halley is squeezed on the bottom there. Oh. Big fan of Edmund Halley. The person who's under Isaac Newton. Because everyone always goes, oh, look, it's Isaac Newton. And they point over the ears and you can see there's a bit oh, of rubbing of, yeah, away of the name. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, poor, that poor chap. That is what happens in the fullness of time. It's a good metaphor. And uh, I think it's page 121. Oh, yeah, there we go. Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking. Uh, All right, Rupert, now you're going to show us something really old, aren't you? Yeah, so this, we think, is the oldest book in the library collection. It's got a very modern binding, obviously, but it's got the date on the spine, 1473. 1473. I mean, that must have been one of the first books printed in, in England. Uh, it's, I think it's printed in Germany, but oh. um, yes, it's only 20 or so years after Gutenberg starts right. printing presses. So the author oh. was a chap called Regio Montanus, or Monte Regio, who was an astronomer, astrologer. Fine line. Not much difference right, in those days. Right. Yeah. And it came to us as part of the Norfolk Library, which is a big donation we got from Henry Howard. And it's rather lovely. Wow. And so are these it's a, it's stars? A, it's a calendar, basically. So the days of the year and how the, oh. the planets and oh, the, right. the I moon can see will be moving around. Saint, Saint days. Yeah, and I guess that's the German for Aquarius, Wasserman, oh, water, Waterman. Waterman. Yeah. John, what's the oldest book you own? Well, I don't know if I should brag, Brady. I don't I know if I should tell the truth. Come on. The first book, I, it's an early printing of a book by Edmund Halley. Amazing. I can't tell you the name of the book because I can't remember it right now, <laughs> but it is about the hydro yeah. hydrological cycle. Right, yeah. Awesome. Now this one has some lovely uh, paper instruments in the back. I think you did a Ooh. video with Louisiana on this. There's a quadrant there. Uh, right. A moving. Oh yeah, it's a like a, a moving moon. It's like a pop-up book. It is. Mm. Quite impressive. There you go. So there's the oldest That's book. That's the oldest book. All right. What do we got next? So one of the things that was enshrined in the Royal Society's charter is that we could print our own books. And this is the second book, and the first with pictures, that the Royal Society printed in 1665. Oh, wow. So it's it's micrographia. Wow. Wow. Observations of minute bodies made by magnifying glass. Yeah, they loved a good subtitle in those days. And this was Robert Hooke, right? Yeah. And this is one of the, the first books that, that describes the microcosmos. That, exactly, that yeah. there's this great array of living organisms that are smaller than the human eye can see. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's oh, the so, microscope so the, that he used on yeah. very delicately. Did he make these illustrations? What a beautiful illustration of that microscope. Yeah, it's a lovely engraving, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the famous first uh, yes. microscopical observations of man-made objects looking very rough and unfinished and right. distorted under the microscope. This is a full stop, and yep. this is what it looked like under the microscope. Indeed, yeah. That's amazing. I mean, that must have just blown 
everyone's mind. Yeah. You must have been like a kid in a candy store when none <laughs> of this stuff had been looked at before through like a microscope. Right, and right. this is like everything, like, Every, oh, what, what can yeah, I look at? Every, oh, a full stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah right, like everything's yeah. interesting. Yeah, everything, everything is interesting if you zoom in enough, right? Yeah, as you said, it's the first view of the microcosmos and even right. things like seeds. Right, uh, seeing right, much the seeds larger of than time. Anyone would have seen them before. And Ooh, then this look is, at this, this is, is this a flea? This one, this is the yeah. flea. Yeah, right. Look at that flea. Hook was very accurate. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've seen 21st century images of fleas. They look exactly they look, like that. Is this like a first one? Is this like a first it edition? It is the first edition, yeah. Right. 1665. Oh my gosh. So yeah. if this was on eBay, like we're talking more than 100 bucks. More than 100 bucks, yeah. yeah. All right. Possibly even more than 1,000. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Hook writes beautifully as well. He draws beautifully and he writes beautifully. So the description of the ant says, it was a creature more troublesome to be drawn than any of the rest. For mm. I could not for a good while think of a way to make it suffer its body to lie quiet in a natural posture. So if you try make and, if you try and stick body. them down in wax or glue, they wriggle around too much. Right. And if I killed it, its body was so little that I did often spoil the shape of it. Wow. So, so the solution is don't kill them, get them, get them mildly intoxicated and then they'll lie still under the microscope. Just like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. So what's this rope up? Okay, this is Isaac Newton's Oh wow. Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. A fairly important book. So that passed through the Royal Society's imprimatur in 1686. Do we know who, whose copy this was? Is that, a, is that at the top there? Or? Yeah, John Flamsteed. So oh. this was John Flamsteed's John. copy, the, the famous yeah. astronomer? Yeah. Newton donated it to John Flamsteed oh. when they were still on speaking terms. Another person Newton fell Newton out fell with. I was going to say, Newton had a, lot of, uh, he had a lot of upsets in his life. He did, yes. John, this is obviously an incredibly famous book, and this is a first edition, so this is like a priceless, priceless artifact. But we have something even more priceless here. It's even more priceless. Even more priceless. <laughs> So this came out in 1687, but in the mid-1680s, prompted by Hooke and Halley and Wren, Newton was writing the manuscript oh motion. Gosh, so this, this is, is the, the manuscript, manuscript of Principia. That's not actually Newton's handwriting. It's his secretary, Humphrey Newton, but it is the version that went to the printers for the oh my gosh. Principia to uh, oh my gosh. be published. There's no illustrations in the manuscript. The illustrations were added. There's little notes in the margins of the manuscript. Of what the illustration say, should look like. Book figure five here, book figure six there. Wow. And see, like... Ink oh, yeah. And, yeah. And you see like fingerprints. Just, and, just <laughs> human life. Very human lived. document, isn't it? Yeah. John, is there an equivalent of this for your books? <laughs> like, like, presumably you did these as electronic documents. Like, like if I wanted to see like right. one of your books, the origin story, are there any handwritten messiness that I could see? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, in, 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 I have printed out drafts where my editor will write notes in the margins and I'll respond to the notes and she'll respond to the responses. Um, and in the, in, in, with, my, with my first few books, we actually mailed the manuscripts, physical manuscripts back and forth to each other. Um, and so you can see some, some marginalia and you can see me crossing things out and rewriting things as I go, but no, it's not, it's not like this. Right. It's very different. For the sake of completeness, we will show you a first edition of the other golden book of science. Yeah, this is Charles Darwin. Wow. On, on the, the origin, origin of species. species. Wow. That's another pronunciation one. I had to look, I'm giving a presentation Spe to a bunch of species. students next week. And I had to look up yesterday whether it's species or species. And? Ah. Species is preferred in the UK, apparently. Mm. It's a beautiful yeah, book. It's a beautiful it's, book. I like the inlay and the, on the cover. It's very nice. So this is a first edition from 1859. It's quite fragile. The paper quality is much less robust than mm -hmm. the Principia, for example. And there's a note saying from the author. I don't think that's Darwin's hand, but... But still. And then there's a few, and then someone else is like... That's our shelf marks, is like, yeah. this was biology, check. It <laughs> used to be in biology until we thought it probably should go in the rare book room. Yeah. <laughs> so those are the two books that got voted as the most significant books in the books history. Books in America, yeah, in, in, right in world science other. history, probably. Yeah. Yeah. You keep writing, mate. One day you might have one of yours just sitting there. Might. You never might, know. Might, you never know. Might, yeah. All right. <laughs> Rupert, Look what at is this, this book? This so, yeah. is a physically massive this is book. Huge. We wanted to get you something extreme. And, it's, <laughs> and the, the entry in the catalogue said this book weighed 17 kilograms. And we were thinking, we're going to need like a team, a team of horses to get this thing upstairs. <laughs> I refuse to believe this is 17 kilograms. Oh, I just tucked it under my arm and brought it up here. <laughs> I, I, think, I think someone has either misweighed it. I've been down it. the gym. No, it's, mm. I did feel that heavy, but it's, it's pretty solid. Yeah. If oh, you wow. lift it like that, you get an idea of the weight. That feels like it could be 17 kilograms, really? actually, okay. mm -hmm. to All me. Right. And what is this book about? Orchids. Orchids. The Orchids of Mexico and Guatemala. The Orchids of Mexico and Guatemala. By James Bateman, who was made a fellow shortly after he issued the first part of this at a very wow. early age. Great. I love all the extra decorations of 
volcanoes yeah. in Mexico. That's on the Mexican flag, isn't it? Yeah, right. Just Maya statues. We've got a blog post coming out imminently about this, and my favourite illustration. That's that one. That's <laughs> librarians moving the book. <laughs> So, so they, he knew, he, he knew it was yeah. uh, a bold thing that he was yeah, doing. Yeah. And that's done by Crookshank, who also illustrated some of the early Dickens books, I believe. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's my favorite small illustrations. But yeah, that's, it's that, kind of a bit small. They didn't, yeah, they but of course of... it does have nice big illustrations in as well of orchids. So. Whoa, there we go. look at that. I love an orchid. We always have an orchid, but my wife is the orchid caretaker in our family. I thought that for the first seven or eight years of our marriage that we had one orchid. <laughs> um, somebody said at a dinner party once, like, uh, you know, it's so hard to keep orchids alive. And I said, I don't know why you would say that. Sarah's been keeping one alive for eight years. And, and Sarah said, well, I, I hate to correct you, but it's been about 15 different orchids. <laughs> so I, do I love an orchid? I, I think I do, but I obviously don't have great powers of observation when it comes to them. You love more orchids than you even knew you, <laughs> you did. <laughs> Well, there's a list of subscribers at the front. So it's like a subscription service. So you got this book by subscription. Yeah. Sure, I have a sock company like that. And so people would receive this in the post and then they would just keep it on a coffee table. Or yeah, something. and it was quite desirable. Only 125 copies of this work are published. And so there were some bookseller copies, but look, only about 15 total. Anyway, we should look at more of these wonderful illustrations. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they're pretty pictures. I love and you the get, So you get too. the um, the lithographer. Uh, printer down the bottom, uh, mm. Mr. Gauchi, who was a Maltese famous printer, mm. I think. And also the people who did the original illustrations. That's by Miss Drake. I think pretty much all the pictures in this book are by female artists. Ooh. Nice. This was at the height of orchidomania, of course. Was there like a sort of tulip, tulipomania yeah, style Yeah, it was a sort of, of later style um, tulip craze for orchids, yeah. Wow. Oh, I never didn't know there was one of those. I think it was something to do with the fact that the glass and metal way of constructing hothouses suddenly developed in the early 19th century so you can make better hothouses to keep your orchids in. Okay. Specimens were getting shipped over from Mexico and Guatemala and British collectors with sufficient funds were amassing mm -hmm. desirable orchids. Oh, that is oh, pretty that, flower. That's nice. Yeah, that's by Mrs. Withers who I think did Great job, about Mrs. 20 of the plates in it. No first name, huh? Just Mrs. Withers. Oh, I've got a crib sheet. I can tell you her first Oh, do name. you? Oh. oh my gosh, of course you do. <laughs> We're going to name check her now. She was called Augusta Innes Withers. Augusta Withers. Okay. Last but not least, I promised Rupert he could choose one book. He's gone for a bit of a wild card here. This is last and so least compared to, <laughs> compared, compared to all this lot. First of all, that's his previous book. So that's by Bertrand Russell. Sure. Who we think of as a mathematician, mathematical philosopher, reformer of society. Mm -hmm. But in his 80s, he decided he wanted to write short stories with mm -hmm. a moral. So the first one is called Satan in the Suburb, Bertrand Russell's earlier volume of short stories. And then this one is called Nightmares. And I just picked this out because I love the dust jacket. Oh, oh my, <laughs> yes, yes. Your favorite dust jacket. It's my, it's the cheesiest dust jacket. Cheesy. I love, yeah, right, it, it beats the Principia any day, right? Yeah, I mean, like, you put uh, this next. You put yeah. this next to um, the Origin of Species. I mean, just which a, one of those are you going to pick up? First, right. Let's face it. And that's a book of short stories. Yeah, huh? I think it's called Nightmares of Eminent Persons. I must confess, I've not read them, but <laughs> one day. The Queen of Sheba's Nightmare. Put not thy trust in princes. And you might be wondering why is this book in the Royal Society collection? Yeah, indeed. Because Russell was an FRS, a fellow oh. of the Society, and to complete the circle. Let's go back to the book we started with. You've memorized this page number. I, I knew this page. This I knew this page number. There he is. Bertrand Russell. 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 Bertrand Russell, the fellow. He signed the book, the book we started with. See how, see how we put that together? Nice work. Smooth, this was really smooth. truly extraordinary. What a special experience. When you said, I hope I impress you, whatever comes after being impressed is how I feel. This <laughs> is just an overwhelming experience. Really beautiful. John, if you could take one home. Well, I do really like this, this uh, dust jacket. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, <laughs> there is a paperback still on the market with sure, that illustration. Sure, so, and I bet, I, I bet it's more affordable than the, uh, <laughs> than the manuscript. Yeah. Of. You'll never get that one on the plane, so you can, you can um, rule that one. <laughs> sure, just, just because of personal interest and the beauty of the illustrations, I think I would, I think I would take home the Robert Hooke book. Micrographia. Yeah, and my personal interest in uh, the microcosmos. I think, that's, I think that's what I'd take home. But, uh, it's real hard to pick. You've got some winners. You can look at Micrographia on the Royal Society website. We have a lovely online version. Wonderful. That's not like a... That's a great... Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Brady, let us have the good ending, where we have a call to <laughs> I'm action plugging Royal Society and a link in the here, description 
to read Micrographia in all its original glory at the Royal Society website. Link in the description below. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'm working with professionals. Lovely. It's completely foreign to me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. We'll have more with John Green soon. Yes, he will don the white gloves of destiny. In the meantime, why not watch our videos with Hank Green, who also paid us a visit at the Royal Society. If you'd like to support Objectivity, help keep the project going, help us make more videos, you can do so on Patreon, just like the people whose names you can see on the screen at the moment. Our thanks to them. Details on everything, all the links you could need, are in the video description. It's early 20th century, and it's a rather fine picture of him, I think. He's looking like he's just out from the rain. He might well be, because yeah. these are his old gardening clothes, his winter set of gardening clothes. He looks all right.